Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and in today's video I want to talk a bit more about my first six months working in private equity as an analyst. I want to talk a bit about how it compares uh, to my previous internship experience but also how my lifestyle has changed since graduating from LSE back in the summer. If that interests you then let's get straight into the video. As a quick reminder, this is a part two and the follow-up to my previous video where I talk about um, what private equity and what infrastructure private equity specifically is. I think you can broadly split private equity into three main parts. The first being origination, where you're basically looking to identify new opportunities and buy new companies. The second being asset management, where having bought a company, you're basically trying to improve it and make it more efficient. And then finally, the sale of the asset where, you know, once you've held this company for a period of time, you've perhaps made it more efficient, you've grown the business, you then look to sell it for a profit. So in my six months at the company, I've actually managed to do bits and pieces of all three, um, albeit to varying degrees. I've probably worked the most on the sale, but I've also done bits and pieces of asset management and actually looking into buying a new company. As an analyst, I do spend the majority of my time working on Excel modeling because um, for all three elements of private equity, so the purchase, asset management, and sale of an asset, the most important part or thing that you're considering is how much the company's worth or what is the company's valuation. And so in order to do that, you need to use Excel to understand what the company's cash flows or profits might be under various scenarios. So from time to time, I'll also be using PowerPoint to create uh, internal presentations. As I could just be on digital infrastructure more generally, where we're talking about key trends that are happening in different geographies, but also progress updates about the asset specifically. So how a sale purchase is progressing, for example. I wouldn't say the learning curve is the steepest I've ever experienced. I'd say that for that, the crown goes to the step up between the first and second year of economics at LSE. What I would say is that at work, I've learned an incredible amount in a relatively short period of time. And I think that's partly because my company has a really great culture of mentorship and helping each other out. But also I think a more potentially larger element is just how much time I spend working. I think the reality is if you work in front office finance, you do spend a lot of time at the office or on your work. And so you ultimately hone your craft a lot quicker than you know if you were to only spend a regular nine to five. For example, I know a lot of people or probably one of the most common concerns when joining kind of any sort of finance job is how good you need to be at something like Excel in order to do well in finance. I remember I certainly was a bit stressed out or nervous about that, you know, prior to my full-time job and especially during my internship. Um, but the reality of it is that because you're spending hours each day working on Excel, you get good at it very, very quickly. So for anyone who is wondering about, you know, whether they're good enough at Excel to work in finance, do not worry about it. You will pick it up in no time. The actual concepts that you use in finance, for me at least, weren't particularly difficult to pick up. I found that, you know, as long as you have a good grasp of something like A-level economics and do a bit of research into corporate finance, you know, how a WAC works or how a DCF works, you'll pr pretty much be okay. Um, a lot of the things you will just pick up by being in a finance environment, by just doing research at your desk or Googling something when you don't understand what's being said in a conversation. And just through that, you'll iteratively get better and understand more and more. The work you do in finance is very different to the economics you study at uh, LSE, for example, because the economics you study is very theoretical and at times quite abstract from the real world. During my degree, we often go through models that try to mathematically explain why an economic concept works in the way that it did. However, I found that the models were so technical and at times quite poorly taught, so that you'd, so effectively you'd end up just solving a bunch of mathematical equations without properly understanding what those equations meant and how they were relevant to the real life concept we were trying to study. In this sense, working in finance has been such a breath of fresh air because in finance, it's kind of the opposite. You can't do any sort of Excel modeling without first properly understanding the logic of what you're trying to model. And so there's never any doubt as to the intuition or the logic as to what I'm doing. I always have to understand that first and then create a formula as opposed to just aimlessly doing a bunch of calculations without understanding what those calculations ever really mean. 
Whilst the internship that I did last summer in 2021 was a pretty good insight into what I should expect my life and day to be like working in private equity, I would say that the mindset I had during my internship was completely different to what my mindset is now working in the full-time job. During the internship, I found that my mindset was a lot more short-term focused. But during my internship, I was basically given a project and I had eight weeks to do this project and finally present it to the senior leaders at the end of my internship. Because I was the only person working on this project and therefore wasn't having an impact on anyone else on a day-to-day -day basis, I was effectively in charge of my own hours. I could leave whenever I wanted as long as I thought I was on track uh, with my project. For example, if I did choose to leave early one day during my internship, it wouldn't really have an effect on anyone but myself. So as long as I felt that I was on target with my project, I could well and truly choose to leave whenever I wanted. This was only further reinforced by the fact that during my internship, COVID was still very much prevalent and so there weren't that many people in the office. So I felt less guilty internally about logging off at 7pm when other people were still working around me. Fast forward to 2022 and it's quite different in terms of my mentality. Because I'm working with other people on projects, I can't just pick and choose my hours like I did before uh, because I can't just log off if in the middle of the evening if another member of my team needs some work out of me. But that's to be expected because I'm effectively comparing an independent project versus a team project. So that's no gripe on work, it's just a reality of the difference between the internship and the full-time job. The other element, which is more of a mental thing from my side, is that even on days when I don't have that much work and I could afford to leave early, I feel a bit weird internally about leaving early because there are more people in the office now who are still working quite late. And I am I think it's because mentally I now feel like I'm contributing to a wider team effort. And so if I leave early whilst other people are still working, it feels like I'm not pulling my weight for the wider team cause. I've also come to realize that for the full-time job, you have to be a lot more patient and have a lot, a lot more of a long-term mindset compared to the internship or even compared to university for that matter. At university, for example, you will always have a deadline to which you're working towards. And in the wider scheme of things, you know that each year at university, what you're doing is effectively working towards your end of year exams in May and June. At your summer internship, you know that you have eight weeks during which you have to come up with a project. And at the end of the eight weeks, the quality of this project will be assessed. Now compare that to the actual full-time private equity job. You have no idea how long it will take to complete something. Say you're working on buying a new company, you don't know how long it will take to have your bid or offer finalized. Um, you could be working on it week after week after week, iteratively improving on your deal, but not knowing exactly when your deal will be completed. On, on a similar note, there is no real connection between how much hard work you put in and you know whether you actually win a deal. Um, during university, you know that you know if you study hard and you study well, you're most likely going to do well um, in your end of year exams. Whereas there's no real connection like that in finance because, or in private equity, because you'll be work. You could be working extremely hard for for weeks and weeks um, on a deal, and at the end not win the deal because someone offers a higher price than you. So this is something that's taken me quite a while to get used to, and it's something that I definitely didn't consider prior to starting the full time role. And so looking at the internship, it is a good way or broadly a good way of replicating the full-time job, but I don't think it properly represents the, the mental state that you've got to be in. As you might imagine, the lifestyle working full-time in private equity is completely different to the life I had as a student. To put it bluntly, as a student, you are time rich and money poor. Whereas as an analyst, I am time poor and money not rich, but definitely a lot better than I was before. As a student, I found that there was very little structure or rigidity to my day. A very, every day was quite flexible and studying made up such a small part of, of my week. Um, on any given day, I could have spent time going to the gym, cooking, meeting friends, exploring London, and of course studying. Uh, but effectively, there were no consequences for how I structured my day. I could have woken up at midday on any given day and there would have been no real consequences for it. This is obviously a massive contrast to my current lifestyle as an analyst where every day I basically need to be online between 9 and 9.30 and I can expect that I'll be working most days until at least 7pm. 
Because such a massive chunk of my day is taken up with work, if I do want to get in these additional activities like going to the gym or even working on a YouTube video for example, I've got to be incredibly structured and disciplined with, with my time. At the same time, the work I do between 9 and 7 is quite it's very mentally stimulating and interesting, don't get me wrong, but it does also get quite, it's also quite fatiguing. And so I have to be very wary or cautious of burnout, a lot more so than I probably did at university. In terms of spending, I find myself spending money on things that will buy me back time. For example, before I used to cook, but now I find myself just going to a market and buying food there. Similarly, I know friends who don't do their laundry anymore. Uh, they'll literally go to a dry cleaners and get their shirts um, washed and ironed for them. One year ago, if someone told me that I'd be spending or consider spending money on things like that, I would have laughed at them because to me that would have been extravagant spending or unnecessary spending. I would have rather just done it myself. Looking at it now, given how time constrained I am, I generally think that spending money on things that will buy me back some of this time are pretty good investments. Besides that, I don't really think my spending has changed all that much um, as an analyst compared to when I was a student. One notable thing that I spend more money on is lunch, which I've probably 3x the expenditure on. As a university student, um, I would pretty religiously just buy a Tesco meal deal uh, back when they were only £3. Whereas these days, um, when I'm working in the office, I will pretty much always go out to the market and buy food from there and each meal there costs about seven to nine pound. It's worth noting that I don't spend as much on breakfast or dinner uh, because breakfast is available at the office and dinner often if I'm working late I can just expense uh, so I don't have to pay any money for that. So I would assume it balances out. If you want me to do more in-depth uh, breakdown of how I budget my money as a full-time analyst and how I budgeted my money as a student I can go through that if you'd like. But that brings me to the end of this video. I hope you guys uh, enjoyed it. Please let me know down in the comment section below uh, what you'd like to see next. And please like, subscribe and share this video to anyone who you think might find it useful. Thanks a lot guys, see you soon.